My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Inscription. There has been an update. Uh, we have two new starter decks with which to work. This appears to be the three blood starter deck. We start with the Black Goat, a Moose Buck, and a Mole for helping to stall there. Can you try it out? Um, not entirely certain what else has changed. Oh, it looks like one of these was no hook. You do not start with the fish hook item. So one of the smaller backpacks was changed to not allow you to start with the fish hook item. The fish hook item is the one that you unlock after beating the angler for the first time in the main game. Uh, and that is an item that just allows you to automatically steal one of your enemy's characters and pull it over to your side of the board. Very similar to their action. Uh, have any of the rest of these changed? Rice belts, tip scales, boss totems, all totems, no boss rares, more difficult, more difficult, and single candle. None of those appear to have changed. Not even their challenge points. So it's just so that, you know, you haven't got double smaller backpack, I guess. Well, I like smaller backpack and I like the pricey pelts. I don't think I need the hook as much. Uh, God, we've got to fill out 80 here. Uh, let's go boss totems, no boss rares. All totem battles and tipped scales? I really don't want to have to turn on either of these more difficult just yet. Especially when I have like one very powerful card in the deck, that being the Moose Buck in the base deck of this. Uh, it feels like I'm... I'm gonna want... What's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, I'm gonna want fewer things that it has to contest, as well as like defend and attack from. Ooh! Okay, that's interesting. There's an opossum in the base deck and only one rabbit pelt. Interesting. Over here we have a worker ant sitting next to a dire wolf pop. Unlikely to happen in this run if I had to guess. I mean, I'd take the dire wolf pop. I'm pretty happy about that. Are you anticipating some extraordinary pelts? A hair pelt singular? Uh, well, I mean, look, there is the worker and there's the Dire Wolf. Uh, the Dire Wolf is not impossible here. It's a great play of the Black Goat if I can actually defend. It's also, like, two pretty good sigils to just go on someone else. It can hold sigils pretty well as well. Uh, it can hold buffs very effectively. The Warrens is more material, if that's what I'm looking for. And it could be. I think the Die Wolf Pop just gives us a another card that can try and help us clinch a victory. So we've got one three blood card and one two blood card that are both here to help us close out. Okay. So if I had to give health to a target, I'd give it to the mole. If I had to give damage to the target, I'd give it to the Die Wolf Pop. Hmm. If I had to sack a target into another, sacrificing that mole into the moose buck actually isn't that bad. It's got a lot of health. It having the ability to try and block incoming damage with that after contesting an enemy and then possibly survive and contest again uh, might be exactly what I need for survival. That said, it also wouldn't be able to block flight. I mean... Uh, <laughs> Increasingly, that's feeling pretty good. I don't like that we have this trapper up here. I'm not going to be able to any, uh, you know, afford anything there. So that looks like we're going over to the left at the very top, which means in the next battle, I want to play at least one of my items. Getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here. Yeah, the mole is a very, very poor draw for me at the moment. Just because otherwise the Black Goat is about to summon someone who clinches out the entire fight, whereas the Mole is very much just for stalling for a turn while I wait for that. Why wait for that if I can do it instantly, you know? Okay. Gotta use an item in this fight. I have a lot of fights where I come in with the idea, I need to use an item, I need to use an item, I need to use an item, and then I leave without exactly using an item. Wild Bull, I could just block one damage instance from. Gonna have to. Nice. Um, Dying Wolf's not really gonna be able to contest that. 
Okay, sure. We just draw out the black goat, and then next turn, after the wild wolf moves over, we'll take a squirrel, squirrel into black goat, into the moose buck, finishes off the wild wolf. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, you're at a scoop right now, but I actually might be able to get a decent amount here. What's that pushing? Seven? So we got one up on you right now? I'm sorry, plies, plies, plies. Sorry. I made it as, as a quick play because I was thinking, oh, well, you know, this, this is a suddenly clever play to do. I was going to otherwise forget, but I'm doing it now kind of thing. Uh, I apologize uh, for the suddenness of it. And for the no warning, especially considering I've been specifically saying that I'll do that. Whoops. Uh, it'll take a moment for me to get used to. But we did manage to use our item there, so we're not going to pick up one. Lamagino. I'll tell you what, that black goat having unkillable is not bad. Well, I mean, it's not great either. It's like a bad version of Manny Lives, because I still have to play the black goat itself, and that's still going to cost me a blood. I am going to get a little bit of bones in this deck because the Direwolf Pup, the Direwolf Pup having Bone Digger at the end of the owner's turn, a card bearing the sigil will generate one bone. Uh, but I don't think that's going to be enough to take the Lamagaya here over here. The Lamagaya having half the amount of attack as you have bones, especially because the Direwolf Pup, when it actually, uh, you know, becomes Elder, when it becomes the actual Direwolf itself, it loses the Bone Digger sigil. However, really interestingly, if it gives Fledgling and Bone Digger to someone else, they become their own Elder Self and they keep the Bone Digger sigil because it was inscripted upon that card rather than, you know, the card transforming to another card. Um, I don't see our opportunity of doing that in the nearest future. I think I roll these. It's just a straight up Dire Wolf. Not bad in this instance. Same for a Warren. The problem we're going to run into is if I put too many expensive cards in the deck and then I have to wait until I draw the Black Goat. The Black Goat, you know, presumably in this case is at the bottom of my deck. Uh, there will be a lot of games that I will just lose because they went like that. Um... The Warrens definitely does help me avoid that. Okay. Yeah, we need a little bit more material in this deck. If it has to happen, it has to happen. Speaking of a little bit more material in this deck, we'll take another squirrel. There's just the material in a back pocket for a later fight. Uh, their stags are going to be defensive. Hopefully we get the... Nope. I was about to say, hopefully we get the opening. will help us block one damage here. No, no, no. Perfect. Um, let's go rabbit into black goat into moose buck and then the opossum to contest the other unit. And we can actually finally have some damage on field. So we'll push four damage this turn. Actually, we might have another... We might have another opportunity in the near future to go to a, uh, you know, a space, a space that does the things. The, the space that makes that play correct. Hang on. The bag. We might accidentally run into a bag soon. So while the idea of putting the Worthy Sacrifice Sigil into the Warren deeply appeals to me, it also reduces the amount of cards that I can hit to have any material, right? It's just a possum with two bones, which is, you know, have I taken a turn or two of stalling? Sacrificing the Black Goat in a, you know, a later act in order to get the major bone blessing, get eight bones at the start of every single fight, is very good. That That's 
That is huge material up. It is something that I am going to look to exploit more commonly. But now? I think I might be able to find something in these next six cards that I'm happy to sack into or sack for. Hmm, yeah, that's interesting. The copy of the Moose Buck is actually really good here. Specifically because we would have it preloaded extremely early for a mycologist, which means that we could actually slot another card into the second Moose Buck and then mycologist together two Moose Bucks that both have sigils on them. And then we have a 614 that body blocks enemies. 14 health, body blocking enemies. Uh, as well as having six damage, which is huge as well. And another sigil, whatever that happens to be. The only problem is, if we take this in the next space, we do have to sacrifice one of these into another one of these. And I'm not certain who that would be into which. I mean, like, if we deeply wanted... We could sack the direwolf pup into the, the moose buck. Reduce the weight of our deck. Give ourselves more time to stall out just looking to the black goat. It's a lot of sigils to have on one card, I'll tell you that much at least. It's exciting. I don't know if it's good, but it's exciting. Okay, another sigil sacrifice space. We're gonna want a very large amount of control over that, but also I definitely don't want to go there. Uh, two moose bucks. We have the basis for a stag related deck. We could try and cut to the left here and try and get some, some tribal synergies going on. Regardless of what I do, I've got to go into this battle first. Their birds are going to be played as guardians. Perfect, perfect. Uh, that's fine. That's no incoming damage this turn. And there's the moose buck. Get him. Get him. And then one, two... One, two, three, four. There we go. Got him down. It's going to absolutely dominate this. Elder Moose Buck. Beauty. So I have moved to a style of trying to have, you know, more different varied draws in the deck that I can hit, right? Uh, to have a bit more resilience in case I don't get to remove all of the cards from the deck or, or get some specific material and payoff combo. And that's been working out really well for us so far. So continuing in that direction, will there ever be a place where I'm like, yeah, I'll actually go buy a golden pelt because then I can get something pretty powerful to add in here? Does shop meta come back to life now that I've learned this? It is impossible to tell. Stack. That's huge. That's monumental. That's incredible. It's gigantic. That's a stag head. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty certain that this means the next time I go to a sacrifice space, it has to have two bodies for the totem. If we find the right thing, we're just going to the absolute moon. Um, I think it's right in this position to sacrifice the black goat into the warren. So we've got two ways to leap to a killer and a killer in the deck. We're going to need more killers because I'm going to put two of the those two moose bucks together, right? In a future mycologist experiment. Mm -hmm. 
The trapper sat hunched beside one of his traps. Quickly cranking it, he gingerly removed a mangled hair from the steel teeth, but left the trap unhinged. You shouldn't have come here. Well, this is difficult. <sighs> so what I need to do is... Well, I can't get a bunch of pelts by allowing the traps to kill my characters, right? Because I only have moose box with damage right now. And an opossum, which I haven't drawn into. The opossum killing this leaping trap would be pretty good, because then I would actually be able to get a, a dire wolf... A, a dire wolf, rather, a wolf pelt for the second phase here. If I smoke, then kill that for the warrens, place the warrens down here, sack the warrens for the moose buck... This moose buck will attack for three on the enemy's side, then move one space over. That strange frog will attack. Does it move after its attack? At the end of the owner's turn, no. Okay, so the strange frog will attack. My moose buck moves to defend because of the borrower. Uh, bullfrog attacks, my moose defends. Strange frog attacks, my moose defends. All of these activate their rampager signal. At the end of the owner's turn, a car bearing the sigil will move in the direction described in the sigil. Creatures in that way will throw behind it. So this strange frog moves over the bullfrog, and then this bullfrog will activate moving over the strange frog, and then this strange frog will move over the leaping trap? Is there any way that I can guarantee that the moose buck lines up against the free line against the bullfrog on a later turn? That's got to be key here, right? So assuming our ordering is correct here, uh, you know, I, I play my moose buck. The leaping traps themselves don't appear to be serpents. So they should no longer have the rampage, uh, rampage sim symbol. The fact that this moves, you know, the bullfrog moves forward and then the strange frog attacks, flips with the bullfrog, and then the bullfrog attacks and flips with the strange frog means this is going to be the open line, right? But I can never end up here if this strange frog ever attacks. So if I get the moose buck to contest this strange frog, I kill that move over. Enemy has their turn. The strange frog uh, attacks. My moose buck moves here. It's... The bullfrog moves down. My moose buck moves here to defend it. And then the bullfrog and the strange frog flip. Two times? Right? Strange frog goes that way, flips. Bullfrog goes that way and flips. Wait, did I actually solve this? Moosebuck here contests. Attack, Moosebuck defends. Sorry, the, the order of operations here is actually really finicky. Uh, Bullfrog attacks. I'm defending in this space. Rampager, Rampager. I'm contesting the Bullfrog. It doesn't bode super well for the turn afterwards, I don't think. But we'll deal one calamity at a time right now with only two killer cards in the deck. I feel like that might be our only choice. Block, block. They swap, swap. Um, I'm going to need to kill that strange frog. Otherwise, you know, I, I attack here, move one space over. It attacks, moves over. Wait, it attacks and then moves over? 
to, so I'm I'm fine against the leaping trap again. I know that I have to draw from the main deck. There's our next move, Spark. God damn it! I'm extremely caffeinated, but this uh this order of operations is too much for me to hold in my head. My poor little head. It just comes down to whether or not I want to get the second moose buck even out now. Or if I just slow play this return. The correct play is to slow play that. You're gonna move over after attacking. So if I get my opossum to move here, I can take down that leaping trap. Strange frog moves over. It'll, you know, block the moose buck. I like it. I get to push three damage here. We get our first pelt. We are going to need some of those. At least one is nice. And then this second moose buck is enough to push for lethal right now. Yeah, we're done. We did it. Only having three minions that have any damage stat in this fight is a little bit terrifying. You need some of them to sack against the leaping traps. I... I'm still in, like, you know, pre-episode 50 of STS kind of thinking, where I'm like, I don't care who the boss at the end of the floor is, I'm just gonna vibe it. And, you know, there's something to be said for that playstyle for some time. Uh, but eventually I go away and then learn the game and then come back again. Here I am in the process of doing that on camera. Uh, it is the end of my turn. Let's trade. More than happy to. Uh, perfect. We already have lethal. Hmm. Very well. And I'll just pop the bat down for a little bit more damage. You simply love to see it. So we don't get boss rares. You will not perish quite yet. Uh, Urali is like pretty unplayable for us, right? Still. Oh, I don't like that card. This is the deep beneath card. It When you draw it, it just randomly becomes a different card, but it hasn't got a sigil inscribed upon it or anything of that sort. Or anything that would make it valuable. I think I'm just going to continue with the stag theming here. Let me think. Oh, yes. As the air grew humid, your boots became harder to pull from the mud. The dank smell of tepid water invaded your nostrils. You had reached the wetlands. Mycologist, hard left. Um, there is a straight up removal space there, which would give me the opportunity to get rid of just this basic black goat, if I wanted to, uh, in order to get a bunch of bones. Having a bunch of bones at the start of the fight can be pretty damn good. You know, the, ab uh, the ability to immediately summon the opossum would not be half bad. Uh, obviously the ability to put anything into the deck that costs bones and know that it is basically going to be free material is quite nice as well. Uh, that said, I don't think we can look the possibility of going to that mycologist in the mouth. Bullfrog, Skink, and Raven Egg. None in particular are deeply appealing there. Ah, Mantis. I see. 
A bifurcated strike could actually be legitimate on a couple of our characters. We'll have to see. I will take another squirrel, just for safety's sake. We've got another fight before we can even next have a bag, so I know that I don't have to use the squirrels here. Yeah, I'm just gonna immediately get the wild bull out. It pushes decent enough damage. I can't rabbit mantis. Uh, my mantis would be sacrificing itself. If, wait, would it? They move to oppose the space that you play in. So yeah, if I played it here, the flying ant would block the skink's movement, but I wouldn't even kill the flying ant. Um, I think this is a hold turn. Good one. There's the moose buck we've been looking for. So the wild bull is going to kill both of those flying ants. And then, I mean, the Moose Buck will protect me against all incoming damage against anyone that isn't flying, so we just kill the final ant. Seems the most likely to be useful. There we go. Uh, do I care about playing the Mantis right now? Yes, and I care about playing the Mantis because it will force that skink to move one space over and survive blocking the flying ant from coming into the field. Okay, that was a lot of pushing and moving and things like that. This is making me nervous. Moose bucket, okay. I mean, we have like dominant control of this battlefield right now. There is extremely little that can be done to us. Whoa. Even blocking those ones. Uh... There you go. Get no benefit out of that myself, but I get a little bit of satisfaction. Okay, again, still just nailing down that line for the mycologists. Ah, the raccoon, a scavenger. When a card bearing the sigil is on the board, opposing creatures also provide bones when perishing. Honestly, not gonna do a huge amount for us, no, the wolf. Uh, pretty late to take a ringworm with the idea of removing that in any way. A smelly skunk as a unit to hold the worthy sacrifice sigil in? Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's a reasonable kind of like a speed block. Speed bump in the road, I guess. They are not victims. <laughs> a 614. Oh, look at that extra sigil just patched on the top there, trying to figure it out. <laughs> uh, okay. Next one's just a straight up battle. We have no choice over that. Uh, if I am going to the right after this, which is entirely possible, I haven't actually made my choice yet. I'm going to have to make sure that I use a squirrel in this fight. Okay... I'm going to push two damage with a Mantis here. Knowing that that Flying Ant is going to move over, opening up the opportunity to push two more damage. Uh, Black Goat. Well, push one damage at least. So I push one damage, I kill one enemy. They push four damage next turn. I push one, they push four. It's not great for me. I'm going to slow their progress with a skunk. Uh, 
Good lord. Yeah, this is going to be the problem, right? We still haven't got a second execution kind of killer card in the deck. Uh, I can do... One... And then... Flying Ant's going to end up moving over. Mud Turtle will end up killing the Mantis. After the Mantis kills the Flying Ant. Skink's just still non-contested over on that side. Uh, so I end up pushing one damage into the enemy this turn, and then next turn they push... One, two. It's fine. It's less fine now. Especially considering there are going to be two flying ants on board next turn no matter what I do. Okay, Wild Bull, we... That's good. And it can probably win this for us, but we have to figure out exactly how right now. Uh, so Skunk stays in this position. Mantis attacks to the left. Mud Turtle kills the Skunk. Uh, Mantis attacks to the right. This is probably the line where I have to play the Wild Bull to have any impact, because the Wild Bull will kill the Flying Ant and the Flying Ant behind. Um... But the Mantis will actually kill that Flying Ant first. So I will get to push three damage. Uh, but then they have four flying damage coming over the top. So exactly how much damage will, they, uh, will I deal next turn if I play the Wild Bull in the rightmost position? Uh, Mantis attacks left, does no damage. Mantis attacks right, kills the Flying Ant. Wild Bull attacks, ID 3 damage. Their turn after that, they populate the board with two Flying Ants, Skink attacks from 1 damage, Mud Turtle kills the Skunk, and two Flying Ants attack over the top for 2 damage apiece. We take 5 damage, I've dealt 3. Okay. Yeah, I need to body block the enemy. Uh, over there on the Skink space. So I can get a Warrens to body block the enemy for two turns. That would be an Opossum summons the Warrens. But then I have to sack the Warrens in order to summon the Wild Bull. Unless I leave the Warrens on the field and summon the Black Goat, knowing that the next turn I'm going to draw the Moose Buck and it sacrifices the Warrens. Okay. So this is how it goes. The Warrens goes down there now. Rabbit goes down here. Black Goat replaces it. The Wild Bull gets played. We're going to take four damage next turn, but I push three. We no longer take lethal here. Fine. So this Wild Bull is going to kill there. There's the Moose Buck. So the Moose Buck gets summoned in either of these spaces. Probably the Skink space, let's be real. Pushes, kills the Skink. Skink doesn't have the ability to even drop its tail. Uh, the Wild Bull kills both Flying Ants. And then the Mantis pushes one damage. I'm one damage up on the enemy. They have the Mud Turtle and the Flying Ant going into the next turn. The Mud Turtle is blocked by the Moose Buck moving over. And then the Flying Ant is only one damage. So I push one damage, they push one damage, we're in equilibrium. I see. Of course. My own Rampager moved over, so the Mud Turtle was not able to be blocked by the Elder Moose Buck. Uh... Okay, so... That, oh, the Elder Moose Buck already protects me against all of the incoming damage here. Yeah, this is fine. We push one. They attempt to attack, attempt to attack. Nice. We're so up and above on terms of materials. It's, un it's impossible to do anything about it. Perfect. 
we finally actually get to push some damage. This is what I was talking about. This is why I'm so glad that it has the defensive symbol as well. Because otherwise, we could be in positions like this forever. Where we have the most powerful play, it's just not enough to do anything. Okay, sacrifice spaces. The Mantis sacrifice into the Wild Bull is kind of appealing. The Wild Bull attacking to the left and the right. Uh, and then moving one space. Like, you can clear the space you're about to move into with the Wild Bull with that. Hmm. Nah, this is difficult. I think I go to the blood and then the sacrifice space. And the reason is actually largely because I want the blood choice here to look for a three blood. No three blood summons. Two blood. Eh, Rat King. Extremely displeased with that? Extremely? I think extremely. I'm not going to use those bones for anything. Yeah, that Rat King is removal bait for later. Okay, we have a second unit in the deck that actually does something. Oh, God. I didn't realize this was gonna... Oh, boy. I'm gonna want to do it as well. I'm gonna gamble on that being a, a good pair. Otherwise, the first Mycologist face will give us a pair, and then the second will take it away. These are exactly the kinds of boards that I don't want to see as well. But thankfully, I do have a lot of stalling tools in hand. It's just, are they going to be enough for long enough? Looks like this one will be. That mud turtle in the back line is still armored. Is it going to prevent being able to take any damage before it even comes into the field? I could also just push lethal immediately with a moose buck. And I don't understand why I wouldn't do that. I almost misplayed there. Yeah, we're doing it. Nah. We're so up on material, another black coat doesn't make a huge amount of sense. A skink in the skunk actually is kind of, that's actually pretty sick. Okay, I'm gonna do the skink in the skunk because now the first mycologist will offer us a dupe of one of our, uh, of uh, three different of the cards in our deck. And then we're going to choose the highest impact one and merge those together in the next space. Perfect. I did. <laughs> the 921. But it's okay. After a turn on board, it becomes a 1023. So finally, its stats become relevant. Ah, yes, boss totem. Well, their birds are going to be moving over. The mud tugged hard at your feet, forcing you to slow your pace. A rank odor caused your stomach to churn and your eyes to water. It was the rotting fish that hung from the branches around you. A huge man approached. Hello. He's met us enough times. He's got to be used to our, our presence by now, surely. Yeah, I have... We have no qualms about this. This is... This is the opening hand. Were there ever one. Mm. Phase one complete. Go push! 
Nice, nice, nice. I, li I like how you did that. And then I'm gonna attack. Perfect. You get blocked. Now I'm gonna attack for 10 damage. Let's even push for one overkill. There we go. Now we need to build that wild bull up such that it is able to do similar stuff to this. I would love a second wild bull. The opportunity to start thinking about joining those together. Actually, a thing I would really like is sacrificing a skink into the skunk and then the other black goat into the other skunk and then joining the two of them so it becomes a perfect stalling tool and it thins down the deck quite effectively. I'm actually quite excited about the future of this deck. I feel like the only thing that can take it down is me making a sudden incredible mistake. Only a faint clinking sound ahead could distract you from the sight. You set out upon the woodlands. Okay, I can't see the sigils actually at the end there. Uh, we're going to take the leftmost. I'm looking for either a wild bull or another unit worth sacrificing into a skunk. Interesting. So the magpie has Hoarder. When a card bearing the sigil is played, you may search your deck for any card and then take it and put it in your hand. That's a pretty damn good sigil to just slap on something that's a cheaper summon like a skunk. Especially because it will allow us to fish for, you know, exactly whatever we happen to need at the time, right? It's like doubling the amount of times we can draw our killer cards or our setup cards, as the case may be. Can't turn that down. Absolutely can't turn that down. Uh, magpie sacks into skunk. And then I'm going skink into the other skunk. Skink into the other skunk, or... Actually, if... If this skunk finds, like, this hordes, then this skunk wants the black goat in it, and then I merge the two. So I play a skunk, which sacrifices for three blood, and also finds the moose blood, uh, the moose buck in the deck to sacrifice four. It's a, a one card kind of situation. Well, a one card combo, I guess. That gets other cards. It's, it's simplified I don't... don't ask me i don't talk for a living wait a second uh skink perfect opposition to that porcupine right now let's go a hey, warren's over there protecting against one damage sack the rabbit the skink over here we push one damage of our own hopefully i don't draw material just don't draw me material right now please why? Uh... Yeah, this is pretty annoying. Because we're going to lose the Warrens. No matter what I do. Well, that's probably the least worst loss we can take there. Killing something else at the same time. There's the moose buck. I still do have the ability right now to summon it using the squirrel. But that's not a term for... Uh, sorry, that's not a strategy for long-term success right there. Blocks. More balls. I'm not going to be summoning now. It'll take at least two, uh, two turns for me to summon it drawing from the main deck, so it might as well just take me the two turns to summon it drawing from the... Other deck. There we go. Trying to make sure that I push a useful amount of damage there. Nice. My god. 
Oh my god, we're gonna push so much overkill this turn. Maybe. Push three and then ten. Perfect. I would have the ability to fail a trial of bones, right? Yeah, I have nothing that masses up to five bones total. I want a wild bull or that. I think I'm going to try and fail the test. I can fail bones? Uh, other ones are really hard because it starts to become do I or do I not draw the moose buck? Like, I can fail damage as long as I don't draw the moose buck. Or the wild bull, which is pretty hard to avoid. I have enough things with 3 health and 21 health and things like that, but health is probably going to happen. Uh, definitely not sigils. Too many things immediately fail that. All right, we try damage. At least give me a wild bull. Uh, yikes. Uh, a river otter that buffs both sides? A raccoon that scavenges and is hefty. An ant spawner. None of that was good. Yeah, no, you're, you're more than welcome to warm whatever you'd like by the fire here. I'm going to attempt to remove the river otter. actually ideal for us. So again, we still have the ability to get rid of that black goat if we desperately want to, but it desperately don't. Take this right-hand side, lead our way up to another totem for the possibility of the stag totem giving us something. Something sick. Ah, yes. The opening turn. The thing our deck does. It's nice to do it occasionally. Shouldn't have even bothered putting that totem down. Run it past me before you make a dumb decision like that again, bud. It can save you a lot of time. Four blood! Wow. Uh, yep, pretty much impossible to fail four blood. We're trying the attack again. Hey! We actually managed to succeed. Uh, and by succeed, I mean fail. And by fail, I mean succeed. Mm. All of our stags are fledgling. Is that good? It doesn't seem it, but it's better than the mole bone digging. It's, it's fine? I don't know. We'll see how it settles. Uh, we are being funneled into another... another bag. But I'm not full up on items. So we don't have any problems yet. Oh, oh no, I already have the kill. What is this? Why did I even think? No thinking allowed. We'll sack that for the Warrens. There we go. And then sack the Warrens for the Wild Bull. It attacks in two different ways. Six immediate damage and that's lethal. I don't need to ever care about overkill again. Uh, we could replace part of the totem here, which is appealing, but also the possibility of going to a mycologist and joining the skunks. It's, uh, you know, I really want to get that black goat into the skunk before I do that, but will I have the opportunity to? Probably not. That's the wild bull, though. God, there's a direwolf, too. No, direwolf's not important. Wobble. Uh, 
we fought. We're pretty deep in the game, right? Like, the next boss after this is Leshy. We fought Trapper and that as our first boss. And then the Fisherman. Right, now it's the Prospector. Fourth boss being Leshy. Uh, which means, like, if I am going to join the Skunks, it's the last time to do it. I like the Wild Bull being uh, a bigger boy. How much do I like the Wild Bull being a bigger boy? It's another execution card. As it stands at the moment. Well... My entire final fight is going to be about trying to keep the moose buck alive. How do I best secure that? Stall plays? And having more wild bulls in the deck, probably. So Leshy... On turn one, if we summon correctly, we can just blow out Leshy on turn one. Uh, and that would be killing the two minions that Leshy intends to summon on turn one, because uh, they have a Mole Man and then they have a minion in the back line. So the Mole Man would move to protect the minion in the back line, uh, and then our Moose Buck would just hit through both. And that'd be it. Now, if the enemy picked up Prospector on that second round, we'd push damage again. They'd still be the Prospector, but I would get another turn after they uh, after they empty the board and play one oppositional unit. It seems really likely that I lose my Moose Buck to an unfortunate draw, draw order here, and I'm gonna need like a second damage dealer. I'm gonna join the skunks. Like six damage with bifurcated strike is, that's already over lethal for the vast majority of situations. Magical bleach. Uh, to the user, my cards on the board will lose all their sigils. A boulder to help block some of the incoming damage. I'm pretty good at blocking incoming damage from the enemy. I'm gonna get rid of their sigils just in case they happen to be anything. A bit too devious for us. Out for the smoke. Twas the prospector, yeehaw! kind of thing I'm thinking about, right? The wild bull could immediately kill both targets on the enemy board here. Uh, and I would have a decent amount of resources left in hand, too. The enemy wouldn't even be able to summon the pack mule or the wolf. Uh, they would destroy my wild bull and the boulder. And I'd have two free places. The problem with having two free places rather than three is that it means that I will need a worthy sacrifice in order to be able to summon a moose buck should I happen to draw that a later turn. Which is incentivizing me to use the squirrel and the smoke to summon the wild bull here, but then that means I'm still going to need to draw material to actually summon the, the warrens for the first time. I think I stole. I think the correct thing for me to do this turn is block with a squirrel. I want the enemy to be able to develop the, the pack mule. I'm 
Then this turn, it would be Smoke and Warrens into Wild Bull. Wild Bull attacks to the left, hitting the Pack Mule, attacks to the right, pushing three damage for us, moves one space over due to its ramp. Well, actually, sorry, it only does uh, two damage to the Pack Mule and two damage to the Blank Space, moves one space over. Uh, and then the Wolf pushes three damage, so we're negative one down on this turn. The Adder attacks. I respond, killing the Wolf, killing the Adder, moving one space over. So this Wild Bull is really, really good at denying the enemy their board state but it's not doing anything against the pack mule. Does it buy me enough turns though? Maybe. Maybe. I'll play the Warrens here instead of the Black Goat just so I get the extra rabbit in hand, which will then sum uh, summon the Black Goat in a later turn. So that's already a setup for the summon of the Moose, should I happen to find it. And this still has to be here, right? because I want to attack the pack mule. I could go here, kill the wolf, and then deal three damage myself. Adam moves down, attacks this, the wild bull. Oh no, because the wild bull will move past the boulder. That's the problem, because it's a rampager, so it'll push the boulder past, and then it'll die to the adder if I put it there, so it goes into space. This also sets up the pack mule to die to the next three incoming damage. Good Elder Wobble. Do I want to pin my entire closer on just the moose that I haven't even drawn out of the deck yet? It would it would cost me all of my resources to do so. So I'm I'm thinking that's a I'm thinking that's a steady no on that one. I'm gonna give that one a, a big old P for pass. So now the wild bull attacks there. Pack mule moves over. That's basically the only thing that's turn. The wild bull responds, moves. Uh, actually, I respond by moving into this space against the pack mule, and then the wolf is coming out on the field in a later turn. This elder wild bull is actually going to kill the enemy before the pack mule dies. Problematically. So my job is to get as many useful materials as possible on board before that happens. Yeah, because we're pushing lethal this turn. Well, I say on board. I mean in hand. Uh, so currently it is rabbit sacks for skunk for summon, sacks for black goat. And then this has gotten the moose buck and then black goat sacks for it. Okay, so I have the ability to push the, the 10 as needed. Good. Didn't just draw into not needing to dig for it, but that's fine. Not like we needed to. There's gold and then there are cores. Gold nuggets and a builder. Hey, Pack Mule's actually gonna block the summon of the Bloodhound here. Nice. I mean, yeah, let's just go for the kill, right? I already scaffolded exactly how it happens. Why would I not do it? Got him. Absolutely got him. I feel pretty good about having left the, the two wild bulls apart there. Them joined would have made that a catastrophe, I feel. Uh, Mantis for bifurcated attack? On the other wild bull? <laughs> it's not that bad. Um, we are so reliant on that moose buck. It is wild. I'm nervous about how over-reliant we are on that one character right now. It's fine. We definitely need to get this Mantis out of the deck, and the Wild Bull benefits hugely from that pickup right now. Wild Bull's also going to uh, evolve, level up, uh, unfledge, uh, experience senescence, um, make its way towards the void. Oh, how I relish this moment. Uh, and become a 4-4 a turn after. Two flames will not suffice this time. 
I'm sure, bud. Okay. We have the opening. Do I push the moose buck onto the field right now? Yes. Yes, we do. If I wiped the enemy's uh, sigils, I would actually be able to just push the moose damage this turn. And if I pushed the moose damage this turn, the enemy would not be able to pick a mask in time to screw with me. I think that's a legitimate play. Okay, let's start. So what is the least materials I can use on this? Squirrel summons the skunk, skunk summons the warrens. Uh, I get another material back in hand and then the warren summons the moose buck. Moose buck, okay. Warrens over that, moose buck over that. We wipe out Oh, it's got the similar effect from it actually had in the uh, in, in the game. Nice. Similarly compressed as well. Uh, then we push. Okay. So we push down the first phase. The enemy still hasn't chosen a mask. They try and respond to that. Is my moose buck going to move over away from that stump? No. Interesting. So hefty doesn't occur then. So knocking down the enemy's first uh, first candle here does seem to mute their turn, but it also seems to mute responses that happen after the damage has been done, I guess. Like after battle cleanup effects. Okay, and then what I'm looking to do now is summon this wild bull in a position where it will kill. Right? Not giving the enemy any time to choose a mask that would screw with me. That wild bull is susceptible to damage from the moon for one round, and then it's going to become a, a bigger bull, a wilder bull. The wildest bull. Um, I'm gonna go drop a skink on the field. Yeah. I didn't want to have to try and work out the order of operations that was gonna get that skink to actually be able to do anything there. Uh, Root King? We are fine. Eee, worked out in the end. Put the draw from there. Some of that over the Wriggling Tail, and then the Rat King over that for the immediate damage, and... Push. Oh, God. So that's, that's a three win streak now for the series. I'm, I'm feeling like I have uh, turned over a new leaf. This will happen. This will happen on a lot of Rhapsody series. Let's be clear. It's going to take 14 episodes of just vibing it out, seeing how it feels, seeing what works, seeing what maybe, you know, just, just exploring. Um, and then I'm going to go and figure out what works. That said, this time I did figure these out on camera, uh, but also... I may play a little bit of inscription in my own time off of camera to solidify some of the fundamentals here. 
Entry 8. Data in beta state. For quality concerns, please contact Kaminsky Data Storage, MFG. We've unlocked the red heart. Sax for two. The value represented with this sigil, the sigil being the sword, will be equal to the number of sacrifices made during your turn. Also, at the end of the owner's turn, red heart will move in the direction inscribed in the sigil. So you have to sacrifice at least two, well, not necessarily at least two units for this. You could sacrifice a black goat, but usually you have to sacrifice at least two units for this. So this becomes a two, two that sprints. I don't see it. I I don't I don't I don't see the value there. Weak start. Cards in starting deck have one less health, plus ten challenge points. Ooh. I like the idea of that challenge for the moment. Let me simply say that my name is Rhapsody, the name of the game. As being inscription Casey's mod up in the top left, you can find the series playlist for all of my content of the game past, present, and future. Down below is YouTube's recommendation for what it thinks you should watch next. Streaming past the names of the people so generously supporting the Republic on Patreon.com slash Rhapsody Plays at or above the $10 tier. And a special thank this episode to Patricia. Hopefully you've all been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow.